guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. You know, as a shop owner, one thing, one comment that I can make that I hope you can all agree with is that it doesn't always take two minutes to drill a two minute hole. And that being said, setup time is a big factor in a lot of things. And when you have a lot of jobs that you're trying to process or a machine that you want to utilize in the most efficient manner, well, setup times are something that you really need to be concerned about and aware of and uh, try to streamline your efficiency. I use many things in my shop when I set up a fixture. I like to have what's called a tooling hole in that fixture. Now with a CNC machine or a manual machine, it really doesn't matter, but especially with the CNC machine that has a, a variety of complex code that's going to be driven from a specific location, you can't be putting your fixtures in your machine and indicating each part or picking this up and picking that up and, and messing around until the machine behaves or the fixture behaves the way it's intended with the code of the machine. Same thing goes with the manual machine. If you're going to stick a fixture on there, you want to be able to find your zero spot on that fixture as fast as possible. Well, not all fixtures and not all parts allow for conventional indicating of the part or the tooling feature, whatever you want to use. Now you can have a tooling hole, which is really good because if it's a flat surface, you indicate it. When the indicator is zero, you zero everything out and you are right where you need to be. And hopefully the fixture will perform the way it did the last time you used it. If you're using something that's less than planar, let's say it's not level anymore, it's sitting up at an angle, well, and you still have that tooling hole in it, you can stick a plug in that hole and you can find the front and rear of the cylinder or the pin with an edge finder just the way you would use any other edge finder on a part. But then you're pretty much out of luck with the other axis. That's where a thing called a tooling ball comes in. Now I was really surprised at how that blew up in the last video I posted when I said tooling ball and if you've never heard of it, post it. Boom! Couldn't believe it. Anyway, a tooling ball is exactly that. You can indicate a ball from any direction. Think about it, right? It's always going to be round no matter which way you look at it. And that's what a tooling ball does. A tooling ball is a little trailer hitch looking ball that you plug into your part and you can indicate it with the head thrown or the part thrown or whatever. So I got a bunch of them sitting on my bench. Let's take a walk out. I'll describe some of the features that I prefer to see on a tooling ball and uh, introduce you to what they do. Let's take a walk. A perfect example for the application of a tooling hole would be on a complex pocket geometry part that looks like this. These are CNC milling machine vices, uh, excuse me, they're CNC milling machine vice jaws, and there's really nothing true on this pocket configuration that you could put an edge finder on or an indicator on to find out where you're at. So on a part that looks like this, once you've pocketed your jaws initially, pick a specific offset up and over. I use one inch and these values, the offset values are also recorded on my setup sheet so I know once I indicate that hole exactly where to shift over and establish my offset for the program. It is an invaluable little feature and it will save you a ton of time going downhill, so downstream. So put that little hole in there, nice clean counterboard, doesn't have to be very deep just something that you can indicate and then record the value either engrave it into the jaw itself or record it on some type of document elsewhere but uh, I highly recommend that you record it or you could find yourself scratching your head and wondering what it is alright let's take a look at the pins and tooling balls you know quite by accident while I was setting this job up I realized that I have another little nifty in my toolbox that I wanted to share with you and that thought led to another thought and before you know it I'm 10 miles from where I wanted to be. How many of you have an edge finder that looks like this? I bet a bunch of you. Okay, one end that you've used 15,000 times, and one end that you've looked at and said, I don't know what that's for, so you don't use it at all. It might as well just have one end on it, period. Well, this little guy right here is for picking up scribe lines. I don't mean get right down on it and pick up the line, but hold this in your collet or drill chuck or whatever and spin it up until this thing is running perfectly still and then turn the machine off and then just sweep it back and forth. That's hard to do with the shadow. 
but sweep it back and forth until you think you have visually lined it up with your scribed line. Right? Piece of cake. That's the same thing little Mr. Wiggler here does. This is an exceptionally sharp point on here. As in, like, watch this. <coughs> no, actually, I didn't. I would never want to do that. Sorry about that. I got to do that once in a while. Now, when you put this in your drill chuck and spin it, do not spin this thing at 15 bajillion RPM because when the centrifugal force or centripetal force or whatever force is going to grab a hold of this and spin it, now you have a fly cutter. And if you go to grab this or it slips out of your fingers, you'll, you may have a couple of less fingers next time you try to grab it. So spin this up at an RPM where you can control it and by pushing it and manipulating it back and forth and letting it float in your fingers, you can get this to run so that it looks like it's not even moving. And then you can find your scribe line on your part. Okay, that's what that's going to be for. This is the way I'm going to set the block up. Drill and ream a 250 hole in the part. And then we're going to get to the tooling balls. Tooling balls. This is a giant tooling ball. This is a one inch diameter tooling ball with a half inch shank. And this is usually pressed into the bottom of a part for fixture location. Instead of using a pin, a cylinder, which can bind up real easy, a ball like this goes down into a one inch receiver hole just perfectly. So if you need to locate fixtures, consider putting a giant tooling ball on the bottom of it. Stop messing around with pins. These are the little brothers. These are tooling balls. And let me find two here that look similar but are different. These guys are right here. These are both 500 diameter tooling balls with quarter inch shanks. And the shanks are usually threaded so that you can secure it from behind with a screw of some fastener of some sort. But you can see that the relief area on this one, the neck area, is considerably shorter than this one. Now if we line them up side by side on the registration surface that they would bump on, and that's underneath here, you can see that one is considerably taller. Well, this is the style that I prefer because the diameter of the ball is the same as the center line to the registration surface. So if you have a 500 tooling ball, that's the only number you need to remember. 500 diameter, 500 up. This one is an older style, to the best of my knowledge, and I believe this is 312 from here up. And personally, if I'm going to be doing trig with all kinds of triangles, I would rather use 0.5 than 0.312 for my calculations. So if I have to recommend or suggest the ball that you buy, buy the one that has the same offset as the diameter. You'll be glad you did. We have the wiggler sitting in the drill truck, and there is a scribed line on this part. I'm gonna scratch a pencil across it so it stands out a little bit better. I'm going to be looking for that line with this wiggler and this machine is currently set at 1460 RPM. It's still there but it's a little bit harder to see now. I'm going to slap that with a six inch scale and I'm going to show you the fly cutter effect that I'm talking about just for your own safety. I would suggest you don't do this. You could well imagine if this thing came around and got a piece of you. I mean, it'll even stick further out. Let's check that out. You can hardly even see it. First time you set this up, make sure it's about as vertical as it can get. Keep it on a lower RPM. I'm going to dial it back to... Actually, I'm going to put it in low range and see how that works out for us.
trust me, that is still rotating. And hopefully this stays in focus. There we go. I'll just drop it closer to your part and visually align it with wherever you want to be. It's that simple guys. That's what you use these for. Just don't run them at a high RPM, you're risking an injury. Okay, be careful. We pop a quarter inch hole in this and we'll move on with the demo. The 250 diameter hole has been successfully reamed in the side of my block here. And I'm going to go through a couple of different setup options for you so you can use whatever is best for uh, your particular part. Now for today's demonstration, or for this demonstration, just going to say 45 is what we're looking at, okay? 45 degrees. This is one inch stock. That hole is 500 on center. If you have your part sitting in your vise, you can use a gauge pin in the side of your part. If your part geometry will allow, you can edge find both sides of the pin to find the center line, and then edge find the block, and you have all the numbers you need to move over and find your target line. There it is little scribe line right there. Now this is also a very good technique. A pin in the side of a part is also a very good technique if you have uh, milled features on here that are in relationship to each other. Let's say you wanted to mill a couple of different angled steps on this and they had to be in relation to each other. You could reference each step to the center line or the tangent of the pin. And as you made the features you would know where they were and all problems solved. You could also, and this is a little unorthodox, but it will work, you can also put little Mr. Tooling Bowl here in the side of your part. And what will that do? Well, that'll solve two problems in one setup. Once you indicate the top of this ball, you know you are 500 from the edge of the part, and you know where you are offset-wise to where you need to be because of the diameter and the height and the angle. In this particular case, it's... Uh, Three, about 354, 353.6 on a 500 at 45, each resultant leg. That's 500 and okay, cut this way, 45 degrees. You want to find that part with your head sitting sideways? You can find the part with the head sitting sideways. Just tram it like you normally would, and you go. If your head is vertical, tram it, make the offset. 353.6 and you go. I will set it up in the machine and I will put Mr. Wiggler in and we'll do a conventional setup like this where I'll come down and I'll indicate it and I will miss the uh, Wiggler see if we can hit that line right there. Because you're not going to indicate it any other way. Setting up you could indicate either side of the pin that will give you your Y value but you're pretty much out of luck on the X. Ball's the only way to go. Let's put it in the machine prove it. Going to have to go handheld here because there's no way to move the tripod the way I want to do it. Here's your tooling ball set in the hole. And if you're going to do this make sure that when your indicator tip comes in contact with it that you're somewhat at or above center on the ball. You don't want to go below center and start to confuse things. Alright, so let's say you've got your ball all indicated in. What do you do now? I hope I can draw this big enough so that you can see it. I can see that. Uh, just for yucks, 45 degree incline on your part. Tooling ball sitting in there. There's the shoulder on the bottom. Plug into your part. Small neck on the ball. And the ball itself. Once you've got your tooling ball stuck in your part, whether you have a hole on location of the feature that you're trying to do, 
And it's okay if you need, if you have a big bore and you know you're going to put a part or a hole in there at a different angle, you can put a pilot hole in on location with the part sitting flat. And it's a, it's a very big help. Once you have indicated your ball, and the center of that ball is going to be on the center line of the spindle, once you've tracked that diameter, you are now right there. Right over the center of that ball, spot on. And if you know the height of the ball, which you do, there's your triangle. Perfect. Once you know your angle, you know your height, you can figure out your offset to so move over and you're in. Piece of cake. You can even look at it that way if you wanted to. Radius, angle, offset. The math is not hard, but it is unavoidable. So if you're going to use a tooling ball, make sure you draw it, do it in your mind, make sure you use the correct angle for the correct corner of that triangle, and your calculation should not let you down. It'll put you right on where you need to be. Okay, we are at zero. My digital is also sitting on zero. If the math is correct and the setup is correct, when I put the wiggler in here and move 353.6 off center, the wiggler should come right down and pick up on that line right there. Let's pop it in the chuck, turn it on, true it up, see what happens. <laughs> the chuck is spinning, the wiggler is. Currently straight. Digital is still zero. Let's move over to the 353.6 on the X. We're going to have to settle for 353.5. And I'm going to move this off center so it does not come down on the hole. And let's see if we can crash this stylus into the part. We are right where we need to be. And I am quite pleased with that. There's really nothing else to say about the tooling ball, guys. Tooling ball will allow you to pick up a slanted surface, whether the ball itself is on the surface or whether the ball is on a mating area somewhere, other feature and you just use the math to get where you're going. This will allow you to indicate when the part is at an angle. I would say get one, keep it around, because when the time comes that you need it, not too many other things are going to get the job done like this will. Good little thing to have. Keep the dust off it. That's it. Okay guys, I may have said this out on the floor, but if you're going to buy yourself one of those tooling balls, the majority of the ones that I've seen are half inch. You can get the one inch or whatever suits your purpose at the time. But be sure, at least from my point of view, the easiest way to calculate a tooling ball feature or a tooling ball offset is if the diameter of the ball is the same value as the center line height to the registration surface. 500 diameter ball, 500 center line. I've seen other balls that have a little bit shorter center line and if you're mentally thinking 500 well your math might come out a little skewed so if I had to recommend one to buy I would say buy the one that has the same center line dimension as the diameter of the ball that's it that's all I got they are very simple they are very efficient and they will save your butt when nothing else is going to allow you to move forward so that's all I got Joe Pine Advanced Innovations Austin Texas I'm out Here's a little freebie tip for you guys if you have one of these things. You know how sharp these are and you know that they can wreak havoc with any type of holder that you put them in. I drilled a hole in the back of my main body here and I store my tip down inside. That way when I put it away 
nobody gets poked all is well try it you'll like it